Welcome to the Dental Insiders Podcast, the industry's single source for the greatest news and industry insights from visionaries in the dental industry. Our guest today is none other than Dr. Luke Schumann. It kind of brings up an interesting kind of evolution of technology question and sort of the future of things. And, and I know you're, you're big on social media. You speak about it, talk about it. You're a you're an expert in that field. You, you know it probably as well as anyone when it comes to understand the, the technology, the interface, the, the actual, in, how to use it in practice. So what's the, um, what's your take on, on social media in dentistry these days? I know, you know it's, been out, well, it's been out five years, right? And it started, everybody had to get on Facebook and a bunch of likes and nobody quite knew how to, what to do with it. How to, yeah, how to, how to make money at it or how to use it. What's your take on social media and, and how a, a dentist, I think we'll follow us, what, what's a quick and easy strategy a dentist can use to make it work for them? I have a lot of issues around social media, and, and, and I have a lot of issues in two separate categories. Um, one is to talk about the dental community, and the other is to talk about the actual companies that are providing it. Right. Um, again, um, I, I, you're correct, as, as you know, I have certain personal missions in wanting to try to make a difference in dentistry, and there's three of them. One, of course, is the award process, which you know with Best of Class. The second one is in the sleep industry, and um, the third one is, here, is in the social media industry. And um, talking about social media, I mean, uh, let's start with the dental community. And I give a program, I'm giving another one tomorrow in Winnipeg. Um, I have given this program now to about 5,500 attendees. And in that program, I always ask a question. I ask them to be honest with me and to raise their hand if they truly understand what search engine optimization is. And of the 5,500 attendees to this point, I've had 36 people raise their hand. So there's problem number one, okay? And, 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 then it, and then if I ask them how many of them are working with a online marketing social media company, 50% of their hands go up. So here's the disconnect. And so if I'm talking to the dental community, number one is, and, and this is what I get all the time, I, I, I know I need it, I don't know what I need, so here's a check. And when that happens with the social media company, the relationship immediately goes south because what is happening is, is that the dental community needs to understand what the definition of success is. So that if they don't know what that is, how can they gauge the return or the value they're getting for their money? Which then again, and I'm gonna get there, is allowing social media companies to take tremendous advantage of the dentist. And here's a perfect example. My own brother, he'll, he'll, he'll be okay with this. He called me and one day. You know, he called me one day and he was working with a social media company and he had an SEO package. And so they were coming out with an advanced SEO package. So he called me and he said, you know, what do you think? Should I go with the advanced SEO package? And I said, well, what are you getting from your existing package? Oh, I don't really know. I said, well, you can't really gauge the advanced one versus the real, the one you have now until you, there are certain questions and answers you need to know so that you're getting a return for the money because it was expensive. Right. So, so the question and the answer to this whole back and forth was that he was going to buy the advanced SEO package because it must be better because it's advanced. Advanced must be and better. That's the pro and that's the problem I have. Because that social media company should have a level of accountability to educate him on SEO, on what's considered to be a return, so that he is knowing that that company is doing the job for him. Right. And then if there's an advanced one, what does that mean? So getting back to the practitioner, number one, they can't do it themselves and they need to understand that. Even though they have staff members that might be great on Facebook and, and, you know, and all the different social media properties, you have to look at a social media company, an online marketing company, like you look at a lawyer or an accountant. You know, I always say that social media is a bullet train that's left the station with no stops, with no stations to stop at, and let's not, you know, leave all of us back at the station. It goes that fast. 
I am not even able to give a handout when I lecture. So because what happens is, is when the organization wants me to give a handout, I can't because by the time I give the actual presentation, something has changed in the social media community. And so I literally give them my presentation. I give them my email and I send it to them. And so how can we as practitioners with everything else we have to deal with, you know, come up with the ability to do this ourselves when myself and as an educator in this field can't even keep up with it in giving the presentation because I can't give a handout because something happens between the handout and the presentation itself. Like this time, it was Google, right? Announcing that they're the alphabet company, that Google's now a division, and now we're all waiting to see what happens to Google Plus or Google My Business. We don't even know. So the dentist has to recognize that they must work with an online marketing company. Now, does the practice need to support that and work with them and provide what's important? Yes. But they're really, the dentist really needs to recognize that they need to do that. And their responsibility is they need to be educated. They don't need to be educated enough to do it or to actually implement it. They need to be educated enough to know what the definition of success is. Right. I, blame, I blame the social media companies for not doing it. That's why I lecture so much because my program is to be that bridge is to try to empower the dentists enough that they're dangerous. I actually do, a, I think I'm the only person who does this, I have about eight slides, which is specifically how to work with a social media company. That you've created at least a checklist of what that company needs to provide to you. So, so the social media companies have to stop taking advantage of the lack of knowledge that we have as practitioners and recognize they have an educational role that is critical and that they have a customer service role. It's not about just providing the technology and their job is done. They need to educate. They need to provide the dentist what the definition of success is so that there is a synergy between them so that they both can be successful instead of the feeling of being taken advantage of and, and that's happening a lot. I mean, as I say in my program, right now there are five social media companies meeting with five different dentists in Boston saying that for $2,000 a month, I'll make you number one in Google. Mm -hmm. right. What's the problem with that? <laughs> it's possible. Four, four are going to lose. So yeah. that's, that, that's my feeling about it. I think that, you know, I think that this is going to improve because the dentists, I think, will start to take more responsibility in, in recognizing to be educated, especially the newer generation of dentists are definitely um, taking an aggressive role in recognizing that importance. And I think that it's becoming more obvious for, I get a chance to work with a lot of the social media companies and I'm pushing really hard to get them to recognize that it's just not about the technology. It has to be the education and the customer service for the relationship to maintain itself. Right, so quick follow up, really quick is, so how does, and this is a, probably not a quick answer, but how does a dentist clear through the clutter and find a reputable company? Because right, so let's say half the companies out there are just out there for a quick buck, fly into dentistry and say, oh, we can get these suckers and we can get them for 500 a month or 1,000 a month or 2,000 a month. But then there are the reputable ones. How does it, how, how do you find the good ones? So I'll respond to that two ways. Um, one is, is you want to get to speak to some of their customers. However, not in the area where you practice. Because obviously customers in the area of practice could potentially see you as a competitor yeah. and taking business and taking, you know, relevance and ranking away from you. So you should speak to people out of state. And typically practitioners are very open and honest with each other. So I would say give me five references out of out, out, not in Maryland. That would be one. And two, some of these companies are doing something that I think is brilliant. And I think it's something that as practitioners you want to to put the radar on as far as sensing that this is a good thing. There are companies now that are creating contracts that are only 30 days. That they're saying that they're confident enough 
that you have the ability, if you're not happy with what they're doing be based on website development, social media involvement, et cetera, that you can opt out. And to me, that's, that's a signal of confidence. You know, one of the things that I hear from, you know, being again at Pride, we had, you know, at past president of Pride, thousands of clients. One of the things that, you know, is the upsetting story is someone that signs a one-year or a two-year contract and they're not happy. And guess what? They're, they're, they're in the contract until they're done. And so that turns into a very emotional relationship because they don't, they're not happy and there's nothing they can do about it. So some of these companies are, um, are really starting to recognize that they need to show the practitioner that they can be confident in them. And so by saying, you know, whatever we do, it's on a 30 day basis. That's the kind of company that I would sort of pick my head up and go, okay, that, that, if, you're, if you're that confident that I have the ability to walk, then I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating that you're giving me, you know, that I'll give you the opportunity to, to make this work. The other thing that you want to be careful about is you do not want to work with companies that give you templates. This makes me crazy because, is, because you know, you, you go to a company that you're interested in a website or you're interested in content and they go, you can have A, B, or C. And, right. and what makes me nuts about that is that if, is, when it comes to Google ranking and relevancy and ranking, the spiders that go out, they immediately know that your content is duplicate. They immediately know that your, your, your templates are duplicate and you get your ranking goes down. Your relevancy goes down because you're basically replicating A, B, or C. So custom websites, custom content is, not, is critical for two reasons. One, it, it, it gives you a much better relevancy and ranking related to the search engine. But secondly, as we know, your website is your home and you will be seen more by the community existing and potential new by your website than any than the past where it used to be make your waiting room beautiful you know have a nice sign well you know that those days are over more people are going to see your website than anything else and so you need and your team needs to feel comfortable that you are representing your your home and yourself properly i find that hard to do by seeing template a b or c um, I think it has to represent you. I think you need to be proud of it. You need your team to be proud of it because it represents them too because the community is seeing it. So there's just some pointers around picking a social media company. <laughs> <laughs>